but like we do all these great things and you're like oh yeah you guys did a really good job you're really close but you fucked up this you broke that you <laughs> stole this from someone <clears throat> a little abacus of xp welcome back everybody <laughs> i am casey stranger i am joined by my mathematical players sure i don't know we were just talking about abacuses um so uh last time the party fought a variety of monsters in the basement of gem blast palace clearing it out and ultimately finding the key to the well-protected cell on the third floor um, going there maxis opened an ornate chest and found inside uh two amulets oh there's a maxis yep um, I'm narrating slowly and figuring by the time I get done, he might be on. Um, so, and both of those amulets appeared to match the description of the Amulet of Foresight, um, though they differed slightly. The first, which sparkled dazzlingly, was labeled, actually, as a fake, while the second, which glowed with an inner light, was labeled as real. Um, curiously, only Maxis and Cain seem to be able to see the second amulet. Um, going downstairs, the party found that snow was falling from above, and the upper floors seemed ethereal and distant. Um, it appeared that the magic of the place was dissolving. Um, as they approached the front doors, a sudden intense gust of wind issued from General Kasir's now open crypt. Uh, coalescing into the form of a 25-foot-tall giantess wearing a simple hooded robe, the color of slate. Uh, most of you were sort of knocked backwards into the next room, um, which leaves Gamork standing alone, facing the giant. Um, let me see, Prof, are you on? Yeah, I just... Hopefully you guys can't hear my fans running in my computer, because they are so loud, and I could not fix it before the street. Uh, actually, at least I don't really hear. I don't hear it at all. So. I don't hear shit. What, uh, what browser are you using, Prof? Uh, I'm using Chrome. Okay. Is it broken again? Well, I'm just not getting your Chrome's video. working for me, but you got no video. I'm gonna... I have, have, well, I had everyone. I just say, I'm gonna... I'm just reloading the whole thing once okay. again, because... Yep. I've been doing nothing but playing Monster Hunter, so my computer hasn't ran in a couple of days. Okay. Um, all right. So, so here you are. Um, this this giantess has emerged. Um, for a long moment, <clears throat> you regard each other, and then finally, she breaks the silence. So, these are the ones who will carry on the legacy of the Cliffbreaker. His soul, it would seem, has judged you worthy, and yet, she trails off and sort of muses to herself, perhaps it would be well for you to understand more of the events that are in motion. The giantess draws herself to her full height and bends her head forward to look down straight at your eyes. She what is this height? About 25 feet. Straight at Gamork's eyes or at someone else's eyes? Just out towards you all. But I mean, she's bent down looking at you, is my point. Um, she says, like her, her neck is bent, is what I mean. She says, My name is Icaros. I walked these lands before you were born. I ruled the skies before your ancestors dreamed of this land. And I have decided, and here she looks directly at Maxis, to help you. You, and she points directly at you, Maxis. Hold forth the amulet. I uh, hold it up, I guess. Okay, so you take it off your neck and just hold it out. Yeah, but I'm gonna, like, wrap the chain around my hand so it can't just be, like, freaking force pulled away from me without okay. me being pulled with it, I guess. Alright. She says, It's a pretty thing, is it not? In its depths lie the future. And yet, I would advise you not to use it, not even to wear it. 
It served the Cliffbreaker for many years, but it betrayed him in the end. Not to his own doom, but to that of others. But now, and here she sort of looks out more generally at all of you. You seek the vestiges, not to use them, you say, but at the direction of Innis. And you have shown also to be, uh, uh, in your possession, the scepter and the crown, and Lacedel and Curil. Quite the collection you have. Quite the dangerous collection, whether you intend to use these items or no. A word of advice for you, then. The tundra is mine, and naught occurs here without my knowledge. I believe you are soon to be pursued. Another band approaches this place, and they are not a day away. I believe they also know what lay here. When they see what's become of this place, they will no doubt seek to track you as far as they are able. When they find themselves unable to track you, for I intend to help you in this, I believe they will resort to other means. But they are not here yet. And so I ask you, heirs to the legacy of the Cliffbreaker, is there any matter of which you wish to inquire? I do not know all, but I have been here long, and I know much. <clears throat> Notes, you're never around when I need you. What was the name of the, the mountain? I'd like to ask her about Mount Grom? Karam, yeah. Okay, uh, what do you say? The cliff... Breaker in his journal wrote about a labyrinth underneath Grom. Do you know anything about that? You said your influence stretches over this place, but does it go into the mountains as well? She bends towards you slightly, cocks her head just a little bit, and says, I know whereof you speak. You... Say so you've read the Cliffbreaker's journal. Yes. Most of it, at least. I, I guess. Well, I, smart. I marked down that I have it. Do I have it, or do you have it? One of you has the journal, one of you has copies. He has right. both pieces. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, uh, I have all the books. So all she books. says, If you've read the journal, then you know the broad outline of it. Mount Karam is a place where many planes that verge upon the prime material plane come together. Going in without a map, you're likely to get lost and have trouble finding your way back. But if you know where you're going, you can get a great many places. Does the airplane go there too? <laughs> <laughs> Balls. Um, that plane indeed verges on ours, and there is an entrance there. Cool, thanks. Why do you ask? No reason. <laughs> Uh, she just sort of shrugs, blinks. Do you know any way to stop this demon invasion, or at least cut off them, like the passage getting here? I mean, if they can't continue reinforcing, then we can actually, like, win this war, right? I see what you are saying. She stops and thinks for a moment. <clears throat> Most of the action, I believe, has been well out of my view. But from what I can tell, they are an enemy to be concerned with, but... I do not believe they are continuing to be reinforced from the abyss. So we just have to kill all of them. That would be one way. 
but have you considered their purpose? Not the purpose I mean, of the demons, I mean. The purpose of demons is rather straightforward. They don't need much more than a chance to uh, pillage and destroy and generally make a mess. But have you considered the purpose of why they are here in the first place? So the other guys could get safe passage through the abyss to get here? Something of the sort. And have you considered what I just told you about the band approaching this place? It's them guys, right? Pretty much. <laughs> it's also probably significant that we took a teleporter like halfway across the fucking world and they're all of a sudden right behind us again. Who are, who are them guys? Wait, have they ever been like right behind us? Or haven't we usually been with it behind them? She shrugs. I've been here. That's for you to answer. I'm looking at Fallon and Colleen. We've been one step behind them this whole time, right? Until now. Um, the a shawl, whatever they're called. The cult guys. Well, they weren't in the snake place. But they were at. They got the. They were at the staff place first, though, weren't they? That was that was a long time ago. Well, at least three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, do you think they teleport here? Or they've just been walking here and we teleported and just got ahead of them. Cause we... Well, they probably have a lot of agents in the field, so it's not like it's the same set of dudes, I bet. Probably not. Seems like a reasonable I deduction. I'm down with the just killing all the demons plan. It seems like a solid one. Okay, so what was her name again? But the, I think she's saying that the demons aren't really the problem. Icarus, what, what is the purpose of the demons? I believe you've already worked it out. They are a distraction for the Ashal, who I believe are after this place. And other related places. Suffice to say... It is a rather valuable bounty that you are carrying with you right now. I would be wary. Why now, though? I mean, they've probably been doing this already, covertly. Why summon a giant army now? Well, I mean, they had to to get here, though. They weren't on this. They weren't on Inningrad before. There were two guys we encountered before the army showed up, like a solid week or two before the army showed up. Yeah, but, like, that's... Them um, coming here. I'll, I'll, the, I'll go ahead and this. correct you here because you would know this. Um, a solid week or two before you learned about it. Um, but, well, actually, no, that's not even true. Uh, so, two things. First of all, they were underground before that point. Um, you know that from the trip that you took and the report that the other group gave you. Um, it's just that they broke to the surface um, around the same time um, that you were either in Dale's Harbor or headed towards the tower. I retract my statement. Can you just stand him? So she regards you a while longer and says, I do not mean to throw you off your course, and I'm sure the goddess has her reasons for wanting you to retrieve these artifacts. I merely wish to make sure that you do not lose sight of aspects of the situation. And here she turns and again looks directly um, at you, Maxis, and says, understand that if you ever need my aid, you have merely to look within yourself. So how many are coming again? Their number is four. 
Can we just kill them? I just say, would it not be better if we just ambushed them in this place? I mean, we don't know if we can take them in a fight, and we're all also... I mean, if they what walk in think? here right now, we're probably, like, not in great shape. Well, they could what also think, have probably? some of the other vestiges. We got lucky when we encountered the people with this scepter. I look about the tall lady. What do you think, tall lady? Uh, do you think we can take him? Perhaps, but... They got any vestiges on him? Perhaps not. I would consider the cost and consider whether you actually intend to use those items that you have. If not, I think you would be well advised to flee. We could totally use him. Well, I mean... Part of the thing is that we're doing this to keep it out of their hands and so that they don't get all of the vestiges, right? As long as they don't get all of them, they can't do what weird thing of Voltroning them all together. Yes, and if the four that pursue you now fail, there will be others. Yeah, it's kind of the problem with the organization thing. But it will delay there, delay them. They won't have any information until they investigate what happened to their guys. I mean, that's that is to say also that they don't already know where the other vestiges are and aren't sending other play people to get the other vestiges elsewhere. It might be better to move on as fast as possible. But we also don't know where the other messages are besides one under the Mount Karam. Let's go there. How do you know of a vestige in Mount Karam? She looks at you I a bit don't. confused. I don't remember it. I remember something being in Mount Karam. No, that was a lifestone or whatever the hell it was called. Well, I don't have my no sense. Yeah, I don't have my notes, Casey. And, Don't pick on me right now. Well, so General Kasiru <laughs> found that there, but a uh, reasonable deduction is that you now have that, actually. That's true. And, mm. and she's, uh, so, uh, what's her face? Icaros says, sort of sighs, um, and says, very well. I've given you some amount of help on your way. Is there anything else I can provide? Otherwise, I would simply ask which way lies your path. I will you know where the other messages are? Unfortunately, I, I do that's... not. I was only entrusted... Well, I only... Can you come with us? You seem pretty strong. She... What are... She, what is this? Uh, how, how, what other ways could you help us? Whoops. Stupid phone. Stop calling. She can help with my phone calling the DM and distract him so he doesn't remember how to kill us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she says, I have already given you some aid, though you may not know of it. That being said, I have matters to attend to in this part of the world. I will help you on your way wherever you intend to go. Can you, like, Man. give us you some of your power? You don't have a spare magical crossbow or anything. <laughs> I'm afraid Do not. we... Do um. we know where we need to go? Which, by the way, thank you. We're very appreciative of the help. And anything that you can do to slow them down would be fantastic. But... We have... We don't know where we're going, do we? Did we know? Did we find another vestige when we were at the, or learn of another vestige location while we were at uh, the library? Nope. Shit. Where were all of the scholars transferring all the stuff? Uh, Citadel, which is um, we. So we could go there and see if they found anything else and or maybe if they're worried about the artifacts that we have we could maybe stash some of them there but that's up to the party 
what about that dwarf base in Jardin? Wasn't uh, weren't we supposed to do something there? The who did what now? So so Jardin, you would remember, was actually um, overrun. That was the one where we were remember, supposed you, to go help. You went underground a second time there, and you warned them of the invasion. They were able to evacuate a lot of their people. Uh, but then when you were at the tower, you did learn that um, it's been overrun by the demon army. I told you guys that. By the way, have I gotten any messages at all with the sling stones? Not recently. Can I send a message real quick to be like, hey, you're still alive? Um, you get a response back. Um, let me think about this. Says, yo, what up? Uh, you get a response back. Yes, luckily. Got a bit of a new job recently. Tell me how you're doing sometime. Okay. Thank you, Casey. Yep. So, regardless, we're heading south, right? I mean, there is nothing out here. We could stop at Tindas on the way. I was about to suggest that. We could also go to Baj. It might be a good thing. So I would remind you of the distances that are involved here. So that, like, roughly three-day journey that you took to get here was from a point, like, somewhere around here. Um, it was that uh, facility that um, that Mira had the wizard send you guys to. So any of the places that you're talking about are hundreds of miles away. Um, and so you have things to consider like food stores, travel time. Um, How the fuck are we getting there? I just say, we pro- would we have enough? Would I know of any locations that we could resupply like in the mountains? The, the like the very beginning, like right over here somewhere. Yeah, so anywhere um, along those. Well, so once you get to the mountains, uh, there start to uh -huh. be more options. Um, the straight path is going to be difficult, but you could do it, um, especially if you found a spot to forage somewhere along the line. Can that mini hideout? Do I know? I know about any details about that small hideout. Like, would I know if there's anyone there that could teleport us back? Well, uh, the room that you came into, you did notice a teleportation circle in the floor. Um, so, like, stands to reason, and, and also, you know that the facility is associated with the guild. <coughs> um, so, good chance the person who's manning it could at least get in contact with people. Yeah, let's go there. Let's go back to the so, teleportation spot. So this pink dot is where we are? Yeah. Okay. We can go back to the well, teleportation spot and get teleported somewhere more central to the continent. And then figure it out from there. Makes sense. Alright. So, let me come back Oh here. god, my head hurts now. Too much thinking. Um, so Icarus sort of hears you guys come to a decision, um, and says, I imagine that was your way, but I feel it's best for people to choose their own path. And she sort of looks up, you hear sort of a faint creaking sound from above. Um, she says, and now it is best that you be off. I do not believe this place will stand much longer now that its purpose is fulfilled. It's finally time for the Cliffbreaker's spirit to become whole. And oh, hey, real quick. Yes? Could you, like, step on the guys or something? Like, hurt, to cause, like, <laughs> hurt them? You know it, too? Or, like, cause them to, like, injure themselves in the road? I mean, she said that she was going to impede the process. I, with the, what is around here, I mean, we, she said she helped us, and we got attacked by a gigantic monster on the way here. So yeah, so impede with bodily harm. He raises a good point, actually. I'm helping you this much, why would I not help you more? 
Um, she looks down at you, Kane, and says, Do you know what I am? Not a clue. Have you heard of the Storm Giants? <laughs> I'm assuming that's a type of giant? You would be correct. The Storm Giants live very far from well, anything in the experience of you all. They live in lofty pit places far removed from civilization of most mortals. Grand places, if they can help it. I do not. I am what is called a quintessent. I have given my life and my heart over to the storm. And it gives me a measure of... Well, that is to say, I far exceeded the lifespan of a normal giant. Suffice to say... I help you this far because of the wishes of a friend. Your affairs do not especially concern me, for the most part, and again she nods towards you, Maxis, but as long as you are in my domain I will render some small aid. Before we head out, do you know how long they are behind us? I last checked on their position some time ago, but it is now very much night. I imagine they shall be here tomorrow afternoon. Thank you very much, and we appreciate the help. And I'm probably going to start making my way outside. And I do I know of any kind of like tribal or whatever honorific shenanigans to like how it is how you're supposed to like address an elder before you leave? Um, give me a history check with advantage. Okay. Whatever he does, I copy it. Fifteen. <laughs> Okay. Um, I actually have to, I, I, I had never considered this. Um, all right. So uh, what you do is um, standing before Icarus, you, um, you take your right hand into a fist. Uh, you bring it up and over your heart and you give a uh, sort of a medium, actually slightly past medium bow down towards the ground and hold that for a long moment. Alright. And Kane copies it. As, as I copy it, I say, thank you, Stormy. You see her smirk, <laughs> and then she dissolves. And as she dissolves, you feel the wind whip around you once again. Um, you hear a crack of thunder and see a peal of lightning, and a rush of wind blows out the doors as the doors fly open. For a moment, it's all chaos and noise, and then the atmosphere is suddenly still and quiet. Distantly, you hear the sound of cracking ice. I think she liked me. And people wonder why I bowed to the storm. All right, so shall we go? Sure. All right. Um, so you all head outside. Um, actually the palace would be dissolving at this point, but this was the image. Um, so going outside, you find that the rock, uh, and, and by the way, I just want to let you guys know, in case you had decided to fight her, I did have a stat block ready, but dear God, um, <laughs> it was a bad idea. It was, probably. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really good time for Kane to stop being instant murder stabby. Yeah, I mean, I kind of narrated in a way that I think implied that you weren't supposed to fight, but all the same, if you'd tried, yeah. Um, okay, 
So going outside, uh, you find that the rock and ice of the ground um, has been reduced to gravel in about a 10-foot wide track, um, leaving a path that you can walk uh, quite easily. So That's we new. have we have about what 36 hours. Should we rest and then get going? Or should you guys think that we should go until – wait, no, it's night now, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 11 o'clock right now. Um, so should we just rest until morning and then head out as soon as we can? Uh, I mean, she said that they were going to be here tomorrow afternoon, and that might be cutting it close. I could do as little as a short rest. I think it's mostly our spellcasters. They look a bit ragged. Yeah, I could do this. I don't think I'm going to have to do the rest of the night. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm fine with a short or long, either one. So, people that are more disadvantaged by this, it's up to you guys. Well, I just don't think I would, I would want to run into any, any more monsters out here at night. Without our spellcasters being able to cast their spells, oh, I almost guarantee that we might. Like it's probably like a sixty forty chance of us actually running into something. So I think we just go ahead and take the long rest and just head out like crack of dawn. Like as soon as sun starts to come up, we just leave. I'm in favor of this plan. Okay. Uh, that that's fine, but. We probably want to head out while we're still under the cover of night as much as we can. That way, yeah, we can walk for like an hour or two, and yeah, then if, if they are close, then it would be better for us to have cover. But also, it seems that we're gonna have a nice. Good, I'm not going. Okay, it also seems like we're gonna have a nice path compared to them, so we can probably make like increase the distance. As we make, like after that first day. Okay, so let's take a break. Okay, so do you guys want to rest here in the cave? Do you want to walk for a few hours first? What's the plan? Uh, walk for would, a few hours. I'd like to go to the front of the cave at least and see what the conditions are like outside. Okay. Um. So you better plan. So let me see. Uh, that's just going to be like uh, half a mile. So that's only going to take like 10, 15 minutes. I won't worry about that too much. Um, yeah, you. Uh, so you spend, like I said, uh, 10 or 15 minutes walking through the cave. Uh, you get out to the front. Um, and I actually know what the weather is. Um, so it's clear, but very cold. Um, it's about, uh, well, it's zero Fahrenheit. Um, whatever that is in Celsius, like minus 17 or something like that. Um, there's a light wind, um, although uh, nature check from anyone. Um, you don't see any snow falling. Can I get an advantage because it's wind? No. Do I get advantage because uh, it's my hometown? Uh, Ish. But I am all, the wind. All of easy. these requests for advantage, man. <laughs> Well, I, it's it's not my fault that Kane ruined it. I, I, I think if it, Max, I think if you we were level advantage. nine, we wouldn't need it. But. <laughs> and you know what, Kane? This this sets no future precedent. But sure, you can have advantage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Um, so Maxis, actually, Kane too. You get to the front. You can, you you get the inkling actually that the wind is picking up a bit. Um, like it might be windier tomorrow. At the very least, you remember how it was when you came in, and this is definitely stronger than that. Okay. Maybe shelter in the cave. Uh, I don't know. This never mind. Okay. So, are you going to shelter here in the front of the cave, or are you going to walk out onto the tundra and find try to? Find uh. Place? I I I feel like we should probably rest. I'm you, you guys don't have any spells. 
I've lost like I don't know, like some good. I've taken some good damage, but mm -hmm. okay. Um, so if you're all right, so you have a couple options here. Um, the the member of your party who needs the least in the way of sleep is Colleen. Uh, the rest of you all probably need at least like six hours. Um, so if you're willing to risk uh, four hours without any watches then you could get going absolutely as soon as possible, probably like, you know, 5 a.m., a um, little bit before the sun is even up. Um, you're going to burn a couple hours extra um, if you want to keep watch through the night. Question. Mm -hmm. Does the alarm spell need the person to be awake? No. Okay, does, the, does it fell and have alarm? But they thought uh, spell slots. More. You're out of spell slots? I think I have one left. I know I have. I think he traded it out. I don't have alarm anymore, but I'm not out of spell slots. Ah, uh, rip. Never mind then. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> Our... I have a bell. Ow. It's three. <laughs> Hold on. What, are you going to rig something up across the mouth of the cave? <laughs> yes. Can... How does a shoot... Hold on. One you could one, do one, that. One. Kane starts doing this around the campsite. He's just going to rig like a little trip wire alarm thing. Okay. Can I finally take this mask off my face and see if uh, a Colleen can identify anything about it? I mean, sure. All this is taking up time before you guys get to sleep, but you can absolutely do that. Um, so could if I stay awake and then rest for like four hours, does that just mean that I don't like? How does that work? Does that you mean won't I just get don't a get full rest. rest? You will take a level of exhaustion. It'll just make it easier for you to get rid of that level of exhaustion later. Okay. Uh, I guess can I read my bestiary book instead then? Okay. So you're uh. You're, 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 I, I'm just clarifying. If you do things that aren't going to sleep, then okay, fine. Never yourself. mind. Never mind. I mean, you're I'll allowed just, to. I just want to make just sure. Have this inventory. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. quantities. Yeah. For... yeah. Uh, um, what, whatever. I'm just gonna throw all my stuff down and then lay down on it and then go to sleep. I'll uh, Fa right. Fallon. I will allow that you spend a little bit of time while you're sort of winding down, uh, reading through that. Um, okay. Actually, by what light are you reading? It's dark in here. Oh, um, just, is it a full moon? <laughs> We're in a um, cave. Actually, pretty close to it. Uh, you'd definitely be sort of straining your eyes, but you could probably read a little bit. I I try to, try he to read reads a can. couple of words every time he sparks his salts. I have a I have a mirror. I don't know if I could help reflect some of the light onto the book. The okay. Page. All right. So so you make this attempt. Um, so here's what I want you to do. Uh, okay. Roll, roll me. I've got two mirrors. I've got a mirror set and a small fancy mirror. Okay. I have a, I have a hand mirror too. <laughs> I'm thinking about something here. Roll me four d four. Okay. Okay, um, so what I want you to do is somewhere on your character sheet to track progress on reading the book, um, I want you to write out of 10. Uh, why is it bio? There's nothing here. So basically you're going to need... Oh, there it is. Uh, you said out of 10? Out of 10. You're going, you're going to need 10 successful sessions of book reading in order to get the advantages of this. So I have, what do I have out of 10? Well, right now you have zero, but um, give me a nature check with disadvantage because of the bad lighting. Okay, yeah, uh, still a zero out of 10. Uh, okay. The lighting Sometimes. is not great. You have trouble reading too much. You get through like a page and then you sort of give up. What is nature built on? Mm. Intelligence. Woohoo. All right. 
Uh, Kane, so make... <laughs> give me uh, give me survival to rig up your little tripwire. Nailed it. Um, yeah, you you have some trouble finding the right places to anchor the string. Uh, the there are lots of things jutting out the walls, but they're kind of slick. Um, I, I was gonna like hammer pittons in, so I guess I just like suck at hammering. Is what I get. Set. Oh, you're gonna try to hammer stuff in. Um, yeah, it just okay. It just hangs too low, and the bell's just on the ground. Well, I mean, so you <laughs> hammer those in. Um, you string it up. Looking at it, it's um, it's a little more so than anything. It's just a little bit obvious in how it's set up. But you imagine that, you know, if like a wild animal, for instance, came in here, if someone who really wasn't paying attention came in, it might do some good. Uh, so Kane stands up, admires his handiwork, and goes to sleep. All right. Um, so is everybody just going to sleep? Is anyone staying, standing watch? I'm just wanting to clarify. Did you get my, my whisper? Because I want to do that. Oh, right. Um, so... You are going to have two hours where everybody else is sleeping and you are not. So you'll be able to get at least that much on it. Um, Mold Earth is in the other book. Um, it's a cantrip, so I figured it'd be pretty quick. Oh, it's a cantrip. That's why. All right. Um, it probably is two hours then. Um, in fact, in fact, I think it just says per spell level. Um for this purpose, yeah, for this purpose, I'm going to consider it equivalent to a first level spell. Um, so, yeah, so two hours, 50 GP in order to do that. Okay. All right. That's all I want. Cool. So, yeah, you can totally do that in the two hours extra that you have because you're an elf. Nailed right. it. Um, okay. So, let me... See here. Uh, let me use these. Okay. So you all sleep through the night. Um, about. Uh, eh. Let me see. Y'all did some stuff. So about six o'clock in the morning, clean. You're like, okay, it's been long enough. We really need oh, to get shit. going. It's time to go. <laughs> Uh, so you sort of gently wake all the others up, um, and you pack up your things. And what? Kane... No, I want to put ice in Kane's bag. <laughs> you, you just like throw ice on Kane while he's sleeping in his bag. I was hoping no one would do this. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like wake up. Uh, Colleen, roll a d4. Okay. Which, as a in a long yeah, rest, do I do I get to attune to this? Uh, or the... Not during a long rest. You have to spend time actually, like concentrating on it. Now, do um, I lose the hit point max? Huh? Oh yeah, so that plus five goes away. So you reset to your normal HP maximum, regain all your spell slots. Mark regains all his poison charges, etc., etc. Uh, Kane, one is the amount of cold damage that you don't take because, let's face it, it's just snow. Um, Maxis. Um, Where do I mark exhaustion, by the way? Oh, were you staying up? No, not. I, I thought I could stay at, well, I don't know. I was going to wake up earlier, but I didn't plan on, like, Never going to sleep at all. I was gonna wake up. I was gonna see if I could wake up earlier and then attune to that. But oh, that's if I can't I, do that, that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, I may. I can just use if we can just do this as like I took a short rest. If we need to do it that way. Um. Yeah. Um. So if you're sleeping for less than six hours, then yep, that'll be the case now. Uh, so, so you're trying to wake up early, so I'm going to say give me a constitution check to see if you can even manage this. All right. 
yep, you manage it. Um, you <laughs> sort of go to sleep just like, you know, I'm planning to wake up early here. Now, all right, so you have this amulet. Um, what are you doing with it? Are you just holding it? Are you wearing it? Etc. Um, I don't know, because I mean, I don't have any like arcana sense or anything like that, but I'm trying, I'm just trying to like, feel it out and get a sense of this, I guess. I mean, okay. I, I Physically, of the item. what are you doing with the amulet? Uh, I'm wearing it, and I'm just kind of, I don't know, meditating, I guess, with it, like, okay. in, on, in, on my person. So, Colleen, you would also be awake at this time. Um, seeing Maxis doing this, would you have any reaction to that, or would you just sort of let him do his thing? Um... I'm kind of doing my own plotting at the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll give him a quizzical side look. All right. Uh, we'll get to the other thing. Uh, can you, in a moment. <laughs> um, so. Uh, can I give you a Slack message, Prof? Will that work? Yeah, that's fine. All right. So. Here are the rules for the amulet, um, and, and I'm going to narrate a little bit of it, but uh, those, those are the rules. Um, let's see here. Um, so, Maxis. Um, you, you wear the amulet and sort of just mentally reach out in that direction. And after some time, you feel a sense of connection and a shift. And then you, you hear uh, a, sort of a rock falling from the ceiling some ways down the chamber, you turn and look that way, then you hear that exact same sound again a few seconds later. You see Colleen lift her pen off the page and raise it to her forehead and thought, and then a few seconds later you see her do the same thing. And slowly you start to sort out these perceptions from each other, and you realize that you are indeed perceiving reality a bit in the future of when things are actually happening. That's really cool, but this is fucking gonna give me such a goddamn headache. Um, actually, no. Uh, as you get used to it, it's surprisingly natural. Um, it's, uh, you're not, you don't feel like you're splitting your attention. You just had to take a moment to learn how to sort out future from present. And once you've got that under wraps, it's, it's almost like being able to look a page ahead in the book, um, while you're living out the page that you're on. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, Colleen, eventually you you finish up uh, recording your spell. You again look over at Maxis, but you sort of shrug to yourself and say, uh, "It's time for the others to get up anyway." Uh, you wake the others up. You throw some snow on Kane. Um, Why? Well, what the heck? <laughs> Never, Colleen. Right. It's not funny. Kane, you. Uh, start to put your things together. I want you to give me a sleight of hand check, a stealth check and a sleight of hand check. Can I put my hood up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Colleen, give me a perception. Perception.
Okay. Do I have advantage on that? Is it a site based thing? Um, it is site based. Interesting. No. Okay. Um, so Colleen, you, you know, again, you're just sort of breaking down your, your bedroll. Um, when you glance over and you notice Kane sort of standing over your bag, um, <laughs> but you realize he's got an armload of snow and he's turning your direction. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my new spell and drop it from his arms, just move the snow into the ground. <laughs> or back into his face. Why not that? We'll do that. Wait, does that work? I can move it in, in 30 feet. Well, but I'm wondering if the snow is a valid target. Yeah, it doesn't have to be... Um, uh, there's dirt in snow. Sure. Um, so... You put rocks in it. I would rule that snow counts. I didn't. I don't put rocks in snowballs. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, so Kane, you're wandering over with this armload of snow that you've gathered <laughs> up, and suddenly it just sort of plumps out of your hands and falls on the ground. Um, that being oh, said, upsetting. I've got to make a a uh, character sheet edit real quick. Um, do 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 do. do. And let me see here. All right, sorry, I have to, I have to check something here. <laughs> Wait a minute, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Aren't you carrying like two daggers? No, I took him. Oh, you no, took him. No, that was that no. was a short sword, but yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying. Uh, I, I was looking over your character sheet, Colleen, and I have dagger and offhand dagger here, but I don't see daggers yeah. in your inventory. I don't have them anymore. Oh, you got rid of them? Yeah, I lost them. Oh, okay. All right. Um. And would you, Kane? You can make you? the relevant deduction if you haven't already. Yes. All right. Um, Starting coming to more boys. Okay. Um, Did you just give me a dagger? So uh, no. So you all gather up and uh, get on your way. All right, so you uh, so you're attempting to get back to the facility that you originally visited when you came here. Um, as usual, I need the leaders of the group to give me uh, survival checks. Mm, that was me too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was you and Fallon last time. Okay. Alright, let me see here. Alright, so that is... Should I cast Pass Without a Trace? So if they find what? where we camped, they can't really tell where we went. That's a fantastic idea. Isn't there a giant Listen, path somewhere. of gravel? Like, that we're walking along? It, this is a glacier with snowstorms all the time. I guarantee that our stuff will be covered. Eventually, maybe not in time for us to, like... I don't know. I think Stormy like, has like, it back. Like today, maybe not, but... All right, so uh, what kind of pace are you guys trying to set? Are you trying to go quickly to uh, keep in front of the other group? Or are you trying to go I vote quickly. quickly? I say, yeah, we. I would like to move fast. I well, agree. we have the advantage of them not knowing. They're probably moving at a slower pace because it's stormy. So. Okay. Um. So let me see here. So yeah, the way has been sort of 
uh, like on the one hand smooth, but sort of churned up again, sort of uh, gravelly uh, going in front of you so that the walking is a lot easier. Um, that said, it is still pretty darn cold. Um, and in addition, uh, there is, oh wait, actually, no, never mind. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, the wind has started picking up, but it is not um, yet super intense. Um, so let me see here. Um, right, so you don't need to do that. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just... Uh, Recording some things. All right, so I need everybody to give me a constitution save with advantage for traveling through the cold. Um, you all get advantage because, again, you're walking. And you're <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> all right. So I think that's everyone. Afforded it? All right, so uh, so Kane, uh, you're Seven. you're gonna take a level of exhaustion at this point, um, as just the the, the sheer cold. Um, even with your warm clothes, even with um, the easier path, it still um, gets to you a bit. I blame the snow. Can we not tell? Cause he's already blue. That's fair. <laughs> so that. <laughs> That being said, um, you travel on this day. Let me see here. So that's probably going to be. Yeah. Um, let me see. You actually make really good pace um, on the day. Um, Is it the only one that got exhaustion? Uh, correct. Um, and you make it. So, so you make it about... Okay, let me back up a bit. Um, so the track that you follow goes a different direction, actually, than the way that you came here. Um, you sort of followed the straight path uh, this direction last time, and you realize that the path that you're traveling this time sort of curls north to go around that steep embankment um, that you wound up last time. It's a little bit longer of a path, um, but it's made up for by just being easier and safer. Um, so you get around the north spur of the mountain and start to come down, and the path sort of starts to bend straight towards where you, Fallon, and Maxis um, think you should be going. Um, so that being said, um, not too far after that, the, the sort of worn path ends, and you're back just on the normal tundra. Um, you cross through some, between another pair of eh, hills, you could call them mountains if you want to. Um, to the south at one point, you see a bit of a frozen lake, but again, you pass around the north side of it. Um, you have to meander around some rocks. Um, and then finally, uh, it starts to grow dark um, you see uh, a fairly full moon and stars come out. Um, so, so you're sort of in that twilight period. Um, you go ahead and make camp once again. Um, I set my alarm trap. Okay. Uh, Kane, give me survival. Also, uh, Fallon, Maxis, um, Mm, let me see here. Actually, all the all four of the rest of you um, give me nature. Uh, Kane, you set it up much better this time. Um, you, you found a little bit of a cleft to uh, make your camp in, um, and although it's not perfect by any means, um, it ought to do a pretty decent job against any uh, intruders from uh, that particular direction. Um, which would be the most likely. Uh, Fallon? Um, Gamork got the 20. 
Yeah, Gamort isn't making this check. That's fine. Um, <laughs> well, he's a part, I got. He's a party I, got, I said too. the rest of you. I said the rest of you. It's fair. Um, I got the same thing as Gamort. <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, all right, I'll allow it. Um, so, so as you finish getting your little camp set up for the night, and you're preparing to go to um, to go to sleep or to do. Uh, whatever it is that you want to do before the night falls. Um, Fallon, uh, you're standing talking to Clean and Aaron. And Mork comes up and sort of uh, gives whatever the closest thing that Mork does to a whimper. And intuitively, you're like, wait a minute, what's going on? You, you look up um, at the stars and... Aaronin, you sort of trace back over the direction that you came here, clean, you recognize the constellations, and the three of you realize together at this moment uh, that you veered a little bit off course, actually. Wait, was the gravel path not a... Not, was that, wasn't there still like a path? I just yeah, it ended a number of miles back, and you must have gotten slightly twisted. Uh, okay. Um, at some point. I blame the uh, Fallon. Fair. I also believe Fallon. <laughs> I can't say anything because I roll a one on that check, and I'm like a fifteen. So. <laughs> uh, that being said, the three of you who succeeded on that check, um, give me a survival check. So Fallon. I'm changing his little, little trap. Hey, let's go. Well, I wasn't asking for you to make sure. Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, that said, Fallon, Aaronin, the two of you sort of put your heads together and talk about um, sort of the path that you traveled on the way here. And you're pretty sure that you knew that you'd figure out where you got turned around. Basically, you had to navigate around some uh, large rock piles and you think. We took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Exactly. Yeah, you, uh, you know, you kept a little bit, you veered a little bit too far north as compared to the way you should be going. So um, you sort of draw a line in the snow, if you will, of like, this is the way that we need to go tomorrow. Um, you know that you're still not all that far away. Um, and yeah, uh, so anyone doing any pre-Betty Buy stuff? Uh, I would like to see if Colleen would check out my mask to tell me if it's got any magical properties. And while I she's doing I can that, identify that, I would like to uh, read more of my book. Okay. Uh, just doing it by moonlight again? Uh, sure. Can I do it while I'm high or does that impair me? <laughs> <laughs> it I'm just going to be a nice guy and I'm going to do you have a hat. Does Fallon have a hat? I, I, I mean, I don't you're wearing, really like, winter clothes, so you'd probably have a hood or a hat of some kind. Cool, I'm going to cast light on his hood. Okay. So, Fallon. Bam! You, you get a headlamp. <laughs> um, I would say that common sense would dictate reading and then getting high rather than the other way around. But who knows? You've got a lot of experience being high. You might be able to manage it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so roll me a d20 to get high first. This is the best D and D. <laughs> oh shit! All right. <laughs> so high. I, just, I basically took Adderall and read the whole book, right? <laughs> All right. So. I'd like to see where he goes with this. He just got turbo focused. Well, we'll see what KC says. I never really know what these rolls mean when I roll. Look at them gears <laughs> turning. Look at him turning. Not only. Is... Wait, which kind of drugs are you taking right now? Uh, gnome salts. I'm gonna join you in taking some gnome salts. As you s okay, uh, Fallon. Fallon, uh, well, actually, Aaron, give me perception. Oh, this is gonna be oh, glorious. Yeah. That's bad. How bad? Uh, nine. <laughs> oh no, good enough. Um, so yeah, you happen to glance over and notice Fallon pulling out his stash. 
um, and go over and ask him if you can join in. Uh, Fallon uh, says, sure, uh, hands you some gnome salts and says, uh, I just need my own salt, but sure. I don't think you have this. I have gnome salts. Since when? Uh, since I created my character. And I was giving gnome <laughs> salts by Casey. Oh, jeez. I thought that cat had a brick of it. I didn't know anybody else had any. I apparently have 20 doses of gnome salts. All right, so Fallon, as you go to hand, to hand them out, Ernan's like, oh, wait, I have some of that, and pulls out his bag as well. Um, <laughs> so Fallon uh, looks at Aaron and like, what in the hell? <laughs> And then he, and then I, and then I say, we'll have to talk later. <laughs> and then I say, do you know about the pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> um, do I know about the pineapple? Uh, no. No. If it gets too weird, say pineapple. I... Pineapple is a safe word. <laughs> me and my, me and my drugs have a safe word. Yep. All right. So, are you lighting up some gnome salts along with Fallon, then, Aaron? Yes. All right. Roll a d twenty. Eighteen. Okay. So, is this the first time that you've ever used gnome salts? Uh, in game, yes. In practice, um, also yes. I'm right. gonna say probably not. Okay. I mean, well, if fairly has... sure, I'm fairly sure I would have tried it at some point. <laughs> okay. Then uh, what I'm going to say is... Uh, a, I'd say more like once or twice, so not regularly. Well, so you just got this one sample from your friend. So what I'm going to say is just deduct one more use of it. Can the, can the secondhand smoke from my batch be so much stronger than his? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Not that much. He did roll an 18. Oh, uh, come but, on. Yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> so, so Aaron, though, amazingly, this stuff is better the second time around. Um, so it's hallucinogenic, obviously. But you have a feeling that as you reflect, like, if you were to reflect on this rationally, you would realize that this should be, like, sickening. Uh, but it's actually extremely pleasant and relaxing. You have this feeling like you're inside of some sort of cylinder rolling around on the outside, going upside down, right side up, upside down. Um, as you do, um, you see um, images and colors sort of weave in and out, um, almost like a kaleidoscope. Um, and I need to look up a thing. Oh, is this a bonding moment? Do we all just need to hit these gnomes all through quick? <laughs> um, I don't know if Kane would be interested. I was say, let's, let's, For a moment, a your your gaze narrows as at the end of this column of light, you see this woman who looks quarter dragon, a quarter devil, and half very attractive woman. Um, sort of looking at you, sort of shaking her head and frowning a little bit, but also smiling. Okay, which quarter is the dragon quarter now? Asking the important questions. I'm talking about percentages, man. Well, okay, wait, <laughs> wait, no. In this particular vision of it, so originally nothing. Originally, you see her as you remember, but then this question occurs to you: Which quarter is the dragon quarter anyway? Um, and... The answer is the quarter. Behind. Okay, interesting. The the dragon quarter is sort of like from her knees down. Um, mm. it, it, at that point, it becomes sort of scaly. Her feet um, move, go into giant claws towards the bottom, which, again, you would think, like, some people would naively consider that not attractive, but it's actually... Pretty hot. <laughs> Naive. <laughs> the fools. I mean, uh, obviously, that's. Uh, I so enjoy our talks. 
Um, <laughs> and as you come out of your trip, uh, faintly, you, you hear a chuckle and a voice says, Don't forget your task now, Aaron. We're going to save Inongrun, guys. Fowlin, I can describe <laughs> what you see. Fairly, Maybe not all of it. Fairly succinctly. First, there is the normal sense of peace and wholeness. There is the faint sort of rocking sensation. Again, not like seasickness rocking, but um, almost like that comforting feeling of like maybe if you had a parent who rocked you when you were a small child. Um, but to top it all off, the, the, the overall feeling is very, very much not parental because the, the image that you actually see is is Anya and Tolly doing things that I'm not going to describe on live stream. <laughs> Wait, who? All right. <laughs> you know who. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> that's that's uh, what you get for a 20. Do I have any blank books with me? I can start a uh, romance novel or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Stevie Romance novel. <laughs> oh gosh! All right. Um, so you come out of your trips, and for a moment, you you both just sort of like actually for about a full minute um, after sort of coming down, you come down around the same time, and you're just sort of staring out um, over the tundra, and then finally. Aaron and you shift a little bit, Fallon, you shift a little bit, and you sort of glance sideways slightly at each other. Uh, Fallon says, that was some of the best pineapple I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> also, I thought one tastes more like you, Fred. Weird. I didn't even understand what you said, but that's okay. Mine tasted a little bit more like kiwi fruit. <laughs> kiwi fruit. What's behind me? Kane says from across the, the way. Kane says what? So. The fuck's a kiwi? What did I identify in his mask while they were off doing that? Nothing. It's just a black velvet mask. It's very nicely <laughs> made, though. It's worth All 25 right. gold. I throw it at Kane. <laughs> Hopefully, it can become cursed over the course of this game. <laughs> um, so I expect you to hold on to book? that. Um. All right. So, uh, Fallon, real quick, will handle your book reading on the basis of your nat twenty on gnome salts. Uh, roll with advantage. Uh, nature with advantage. Nature with advantage, okay. Like hyper focused <laughs> reading. It's gonna be a double net one. Okay. Oh, so close. One out of ten. <laughs> you you absorb the knowledges. Okay. Um, the way that I'm doing this is one roll per hour of reading. There's no more. There's um, no more. <laughs> sorry, my dog wants treats. I'm trying to tell ah, him there's no more. That's funny. Bruce, there's no more. But uh, so so right now, before you're like trying to get some sleep, that's probably all the more you can you can fit in. But um, you know, in the future, if you have downtime, you might be able to polish the rest off pretty quickly. Um, cool. All right, all right. So that handled Fallon and some of the stuff that Colleen and Aaronin did. Uh, so Kane, you set up your little trap. Are you doing anything else before you go to bed? I'm going up to Max's. Okay. Uh, Maxis, you're doing whatever you're doing. We'll establish that momentarily, but maybe you're just sort of, um, you know, unpacking and getting ready for the night uh, when Kane uh, sort of uh, strides up. And uh, are you standing, sitting, Kane? I'll imagine. Whatever. I guess I'd, I'll sit. So I assume he's sitting. He's like, hey, well, I'll say he's buddy. like patched up his stuff at the moment. So yeah, you come up, sit down, and say hi. All right. Hey, man. You know, you and I, we, we think a lot alike, you know, we were both down to do some killing earlier, although, you know, it wasn't the best idea, but we, we, we think on the same wavelengths, you and I. 
So, uh, we decided to talk about this amulet thing once you got out of the castle. So, we're going to start negotiating for that now? What? I, I just I, got I, back. I, I just got back into Discord, so I heard nothing. Oh, gosh, Rip. that's unfortunate. Okay, I flattered you a lot, a bit, kind of. I don't know. I tried to create some ground between us, and then I asked about negotiating for the amulet. Absolutely not. And I will put it inside my shirt. No, the pink, the pink one. No. The one that you wanted. Yes, I will take it from you eventually. <laughs> Do you see this in character? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> I, I tucked the amulet back in my shirt. <laughs> no. No, thank you. <laughs> and I guess I go back over to the, like, other side of the camp. <laughs> at what point have I come at Kane with this mask? <laughs> <laughs> I guess at that point right I can get hit with hit with the mask just like as I'm getting up to walking. I was really excited to make a Persona 5 joke and it just I the Discord died as soon as that happened. And I was so angry. It's unfortunate. Alright, yeah. So <laughs> can you get a mask in the face? I keep the mask. Good. That's exactly how I planned it. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see, Fallon, uh, what did I name this thing? Is it just Black Velvet uh, Mask? Well, in my, mine says Black Velvet Mask with Silver Stitchins. Okay, yeah, so, Kane, that's what it is. Um, it weighs... Yes, I'll remove it from that. my inventory It weighs point one. <laughs> you could Remember theoretically to... give it back to Fallon, but, you know. I I'll could. just remember... I'll just remember to like wait till I go to some town to find somebody to identify magical items. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't want to delete it, Fallon, you could just uh, just mark it zero. Gone. Okay. I, did 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 he see that Colleen with Colleen Gators? He's too high reading. Oh no, he's high right now. Um, yeah, all, all in the span of time, he's still got like another fifteen minutes of being high. All right. Uh, Clean doesn't appreciate doing your bitch work. Why you go get high? <laughs> I lead you around the party and do the DPS. It's cool. Uh, so, uh, Kane, I wasn't hired are you, are you using this time for anything else? I, he didn't even want to negotiate, man. I'm going to take that as a no. Uh, I can't think of anything aside from the, find the temptation to, like, steal the amulet. But that would go poorly if, it, if I failed. So uh, I, 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 I won't do it. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Kane. Oh. Yes, Colleen. Would you kindly sign this piece of parchment for me? No. <laughs> no. Can I, can I read the piece, piece of parchment? It, it's a blank piece of parchment. No. <laughs> so you're saying you don't want to put your name inside your box just in case anyone happens to open it? Be like, Kane. Oh, Yo, you're, oh, uh, that's cheeky. I like it. <laughs> I signed the paper. All right, wait a minute. I, I put it in not... the ornate box. Oh, okay, that's what's going on. Yeah. We got okay. Next time we get to a town, this is gonna be great. <laughs> if you feel like putting your special lock on there, it'll be that much harder to open. But oh shit, yeah, I'm gonna put my lock on there. Uh, well, you don't have a key for it yet. You, have, you just put the lock on I... it anyway. I don't care, I just put the lock on there. This right. is, we're not trying to open this, we're trying to make it look like it's something valuable inside. Alright, who's carrying the box? I've Colleen's got the carrying box. the box. Okay, uh, how much did the lock weigh? Point 0.5. Okay, so it's now ornate box with lock. And it weighs 1.5. Um, and Kane, you can deduct quality lock. It didn't change the weight. And then I will cast arcane lock on it. <laughs> oh shit! And say that no one may open it but myself. Or Kane. Now, doesn't that have a material cost to it? 
I think you have to have 25 gold. I can throw that at it. Uh, well, I think it has to be like gold. Gold How dust gold worth at least dust? 25 gold. Right, do you have any gold Hey, Maxis, can you crush this dust? <laughs> just gold into dust? Clean, do you have any gold dust? Uh, not specifically I... written. I mean, I could, okay. like, maybe I thought some we had to talk about, that. like, material components a while back, and I, like, gave you a chance to buy some if you wanted. Do you remember that? We, uh, you thought... gave me the Mother of Pearl for a thing, but we weren't in town doing that. I, yeah, uh, I thought we were already on the right. glacier. Okay, uh, I will tell you what. I will allow you at this time to deduct up to e either 25 or 50 gold. In order to have that much gold dust. So, what I'm saying is, you can cast your spell now, um, and you can have another 25 gold in the wings, like another 25 gold dust in the wings if you want it. Okay, I see. Yes, let's do that. All right, and just I uh, don't oh, actually know. That's been deducted. All right. Which one Just of us is a better it talker, like, Kaleen? It's gonna be pretty light for gold dust. Um, here, I'll just do it. Gold. Whoops. Ah. I mean, wouldn't 25 gold pieces worth of gold dust weigh the same as 25 gold pieces? No, because the, the value of the coin is a lot higher than the value of what it's made from. That's how money works. Alright, there you go. Um, okay. Alright, so now you have an arcane locked with a lock that was already a pretty high DC. Dear God, this thing is impossible to get into. Um, <laughs> Alright. So, Colleen, which one of us is a better talker? I'll right. do it. Well, I'm certainly not talking to any dirty rotten thieves, and that's probably the best sale, so I think you've got that one. You could probably go to a reputable merchant who doesn't have magic at their disposal. You find a buyer, and we'll do it together. All right. Uh, it's, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> so okay, right, so um, I use real quick. Uh, cleaner cane. Anything else for you guys? That's it. Right. No, we're, the, we're finally executing the plan I came up with like months ago. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. All right, Maxis, go ahead. Okay, so I use ten of these Reamer Haas tea to embed on this shield that did not, like, they were not very secure. Can I carve the other ones, or at least start carving them to thread them onto my, uh, this chain? Alright, so, the I didn't think that you actually tried to build a shield. Oh yeah, I didn't did do that yet. But I, but I still have teeth, Alright, so, guess. first of all, while you're going in there, um, I want you, I'm just gonna make it a luck check for your Reamer Haas uh, eyes to see how well they've held up. Roll a D100. Right. Uh, okay. 75. Still in good shape. Um, Sweet. Uh, so yeah, you can certainly take the teeth and start trying to thread them. Um, let me see here. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a strange... Oh, uh, let me see, actually. So what you have impressive. are, like, tools for, like, field dressing an animal. This is detail work to actually bore a small hole through teeth. So uh, right. unless you have some tool that I'm not aware of, I don't think you're equipped to do that right now. Um... I don't think so because so i have leather work and then cooking tools oh. but i don't think yeah what do yeah no it would have yeah, to be like I'd jeweler's say... tools or something like that yeah I'd, it would probably break so okay don't worry about it though i have playing cards all right um Aaron, are you doing anything after you get high mm, not really no all right cool uh, so he's making uh, snow angels. I'm there. definitely making snow angels. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I uh, guess I'm making performance. I am making. Wait, what's that? Performance check? Yeah. I'm making fantastic snow angels. I'm gonna. Yeah, just that's, hang out uh, that's a, that's a four. A four. A four. 
your snow angel is adorable. <laughs> and, like, I mean, in the same way, like when your four year old makes a snow angel, and it's kind of messed up, but it's like, doll. It's like I might that. still be a little bit high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so uh, are people setting watches at all? Um, uh, I will take a I, watch. Right. I will also take a watch, but I am definitely like going to sleep tonight. I'm, <laughs> I'm taking a watch. a watch. I'll take a watch with Maxis. This is fine. Okay, and then I heard Aaron in too, so that's right, totally sorry. fine. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, does the order matter to anybody? Not in the right. Where is mine? So, uh, all right. So I'll actually say most of you go to sleep, um, but Maxis and Kane, the two of you, uh, take first watch together. All right. So are you sure you do, there's nothing no deal we can strike over this over these amulets, or even just mm. this one? No, probably not. Mainly because. Even if I do take that one, then Keelan wanted that one also, and Clean. then oh, I'm bad. just gonna keep correcting you on that one. Clean. It's all right. But I'm gonna start calling her Keelan. <laughs> yeah, no, probably. I'm just gonna assume that Max doesn't know how to pronounce names correctly. All right, regardless, so wanted that one. Regardless, either one of them were owned by the Cliffbreaker, which is what I was wanting. So I'm content now. Yeah, could we swap? We also did just like pretty much destroy a like a sacred place for my people. So I that mean, probably needs to be remarked on at some point. I mean, we didn't know it would destroy it, did we? Well, I mean, no, but like I should probably tell my people about that at some point. Probably put that on a docket somewhere. <laughs> Possibly. So, but I mean, I mean, we could swap because an amulet that so I could see ahead would be very useful for me. Help me get through his sneak attacks in. J okay. You get yeah, sneak you don't attack. Know how it works, game. Oh, yeah, you do know the name though. You could guess. Go ahead. Well, it's foresight. Yeah, but yeah. That's Kane's fair. dumb. Never mind. Retract that. Kane's dumb. No, he I, just I, really I, wants the restage. <laughs> all right, up to you. And this is like the least like. I just thought this, you wouldn't know, and then I reflected, the and was like, "Nah, eh, you could potentially guess something along those lines." So, anyways, go ahead. Like, we could swap, but I, I could I could do add something else to the pot, or like a favor or something, add to because this is to make a more even trade. What What do you got? I got a bunch of jewels. Uh. I'll, dude, I just spent four years of my life in a forest just killing things. For, that's, that's what I do for fun. Jewels is not really what gets me up in the morning. Sorry, buddy. But it can help you buy fancy stuff, like fancy weapons and things. I, I live outside. <laughs> but you still use weapons, right? <laughs> I have an axe that's magic and doesn't break. What about... A um, better magical axe. Do, do you have one? What if I can get you one? What if I get you a better weapon? Then we will discuss that when you do. Alright then. Seems fair. Probably not though. Because <laughs> <laughs> even if you get... I, if there is a magical axe, then I can probably just take it also or buy it or whatever unless you're like doing something weird with can you make magical axes you can't make magical axes <laughs> convince them you can make magical axes i mean hey look i am a very sneaky and stealthy individual i'm part of a very influential organization i could i could i could anything you want i could probably get you is Probably not. And with I, that, we're I, gonna I, we're gonna draw this scene to a close as Kane dejectedly decides, eh, 
maybe maybe the swap is not actually happening. I'll make it happen, damn it. I want maybe that idea. Later. It will happen later. You'll figure out a okay. way. I'll um, figure something out. But for now, you sort of... They gave us the names of the vestiges. I'm like, foresight, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for now, you sort of just uh, stare off um, onto the tundra in slightly different directions and pass a mostly quiet watch. Um, that said, Colleen, um, during your meditation... You 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 enter one of those really light stages of. I mean, first of all, elven meditation is a little bit different from normal sleep. It's already a little bit lighter by its nature. Um, but then, moreover, uh, you get into that hazy space um, in between that meditation and wakefulness and you uh, you realize that you're looking at Lassadel once again um, he's standing just in front of you um, a little bit to one side um, and behind him you see a bed of straw um, there's a slender, raven-haired girl of about your height who's stretched out on her side on it. Um, Lassadel is looking at her. Um, then he goes and sits on the side of the bed and turns his head towards her. And then he seems to notice you and uh, look back at you with his yellow eyes shimmering. And he says, oh, hello, Colleen, you. Hello, Colleen. You what, mate? <laughs> no, I, I didn't call you here at all. It looks like you found your own way somehow. Um, but may as well tell you. Um, he looks back down at the bed. Um, this is my sister, uh, Kirill. I'm not sure if sister is the proper term, but that's how I think of her. Uh, she's the sturdy one. Dependable, straightforward, kind. A and you look and you realize that he's actually standing in sort of the in-between space, uh, sort of between you and Cain. Is she still asleep? It would seem so. But maybe soon. I slept for some time after you found me. I really wish I could do more to help. It's fine. It's fine. This will... I'm sure it'll all work itself out in time. I just, now that I've started to remember, I don't know, I feel more lonely than I used to. More lonely knowing more. Well, I didn't know what to miss before. Ah. He, well, he how, goes, how do we help her? I... I don't know, as I said, maybe it's just time. Maybe being out of the place where she was set to rest might set something in motion. I think it did for me. Should I try to get her from Cain? Um, well, make sure that she doesn't wander too much further, if you would. Um, as far as getting her... This is close enough for now. I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable with the fact that he has her, but will I'll do my best to keep a, a good eye on her. Thanks. He sort of looks up and appears to become thoughtful 
And then he says, Yes, I, I remember fairly well right now. Um, a while back, somebody used me to create a physical object. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember. So, so here's the thing. We all, the, the three of us, I seem to think I have a younger brother, too. Um, but we all have that ability. The ability to form all aspects of being. But, um, I, as I told you, I'm the soul stone. It's not really my, my strong suit. It puts a lot of strain on me and on my wielder to be used for that purpose. To create um, matter, if you will. Um, Kirill, though, she can handle that easily. You know, things used to be different. Body and spirit were all the same, but something went bad with that arrangement. I don't remember what it was, but I remember that. My my siblings and I, we, we shepherded the transition, you might say, from everything being mixed to it being separated as it is now. Um, but... I think we can take things back, too. That's what it is. We we had to sleep to keep things from going back to the way they were. Which raises the question, why am I awake now, and why isn't... I have to think about this. He just sort of stares off for another long moment, and then he says... Uh, Colleen, you've been great, honestly. Um, as I said, just... Make sure she doesn't wander too much further, and I think things will be fine. And if it's alright, though, I'd like some time alone with Kirill. Sure, um... Do you have any idea where your younger brother might be? I'll tell you as soon as I remember something. Alright, I'll... take that as a promise. I'll... You can count on let, I'll let him be. Um, you sort of feel yourself slipping further deeper into your meditation once again. The scene sort of shimmers and fades before your eyes. Um, but before it disappears completely, you see Lassadel, um, lying on the bed next to his sister, his hand on her shoulder, and his forehead sort of bent towards hers. All right, um... So, Maxis and Kane finish their bickering. They or not bickering, their unfruitful negotiation. Um, they spend a few hours watching, and then like, all right, time to wake up, Aaron. Um, so Maxis, you just sort of uh, huff and roll over and go to sleep. Kane, you walk over and sort of nudge Aaron and awake. Can I hit, like, at the pressure point in, like, the mm. side? Mm. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, jump in the side, make go You know? That, that would be the worst way to wake up. Like, real talk. Yeah. You can try. You're, that's what I do. <laughs> I do that. To wake up. Okay. I have, to, I have to haze the new guys, alright? Aaron and he does that. So as a reaction, all right. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm real tempted to actually do this. I'm like ready to jump back and dodge shit. By the way, as I do this, just in case he's more awake than I thought. Yeah, as a reaction, I'm just gonna hit you with Wrath of the Storm. All right, I need you to make a Wisdom saving throw to see if you even have your wits about you enough for you to even do that. Fair. Twenty. Okay, and then I am going to need you to make a. Let me think here. What is this gonna be? This is kind of weird, but I'm gonna call it a charisma saving throw. Or actually, For just a charisma. Just make a straight charisma check. Yeah. Charisma check, not a charisma save. Not me for once. Okay. Alright, so you 
are on the road, you're alert for any danger, things like that. Um, and Kane comes and wakes you up in sort of a painful way. And you're instantly extremely angry. Um, you have your wits about you, but it does occur to you that as uncomfortable as what Kane did to you was, um, actually attacking him with a spell that is strong enough to kill people would be on a different level. I'll just give him a mild zap. Like if he like like around like if he licked a nine volt battery kind of zap. I'll allow it. Um, all right. So and then, so Aaron, you sort save. of you sort of draw the magic in to yourself. Um, well, no, because you're kind of touching him, and it's just he's like giving you a severe case of static, basically. He, like I jab and back up. He, he reacts that quickly. Yeah. To, like it's he had zap. really high. He had a twenty on his wisdom save, man. Um, so yeah. I don't plus that into wisdom saving throws, my dude. I disengage just my, with my bonus action. No, <laughs> I'm narrated. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, you do this, Kane, and Aaronin, you see, you see his eyes suddenly come awake, he grimaces in pain, and almost in the same motion, he reaches out, gathers this magical energy to himself, and gives you a mighty zap, um, bordering on a shock but basically just a very severe static shock and you sort of jump back man this is man can i i can't save against it no i just said no but <laughs> i'd rather take in the wrap the store <laughs> all right any interaction between the two of you or are you just sort of staring each other down as you switch out uh, I'll, I'll flip him off. I'll giggle. And then roll over. Party <laughs> <laughs> uh, wants to escalate, but, but I'm, I'm trying to be, be a better a better person. <laughs> Alright. I will just go to sleep and plot for later. <laughs> Alright. Um... As he's trying to go to sleep, yeah. I would like to use Thaumaturgy to make ominous whispers surround his head. <laughs> See, that's escalating, man. <laughs> As you settle down to sleep, you hear these dark whispers. And every can once I tell in a while, what you the feel like you can from? catch out a word. And it says, do. It says what? If you couldn't hear that, then Kane doesn't hear it. I, I don't hear the whispers. What? Because well, no, I can't you heard hear the sound. You just couldn't quite make it out, but you feel vaguely unsettled. Okay. All right. Do you go to sleep? Unless I unless I know that was because of Aaron. And... Um. What? Call it. Give me an Arcana check. I throw snow at him. You <laughs> hold on a sec. You uh, you know that there is a spell called Thaumaturgy that lots of clerics know that allows them to make effects like that. That's enough evidence for Kane. He's not a snow throwing. All right, make me a charisma save. Let me sleep. <laughs> no, not this again. My conscience, no. <laughs> I would like to make a dexterity save to try and dodge the snow. No, no, there's not no. snow. Yeah, I'm making snow. you make a Christmas save. No, you don't throw snow. You. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I just did. Can I just let no. me go to sleep? Yeah, you go to sleep. <laughs> no, I'm talking talking to Aaron. Let me sleep. You, you shit. What? We were already even. Now we're uneven. What did you say? All right, uh, Aaron, I'm give asleep. me perception for your watch. That's a nine. Okay. Um, Kane. Um, as as you sleep, you dream as well. Oh boy. 
Is it this one? Is this the one I want? Yeah, we'll go with this. You are somewhere else. Somewhere warmer. Somewhere high up, feeling the sun beat down on you pleasantly while the waves crash against the rocks below. Wait a minute. You know this place. You turn around slowly, hesitantly. Yep, there it is. That same cottage. Any reaction you might have had to this situation is interrupted by the shock of hearing a voice from above. Well, Kane, it says, I think I've waited long enough to qualify as not being pushy. You jerk your head upwards and you see your mother, balanced gracefully on the low-hanging limb of an elm tree, her back against the trunk. Um, her long white hair tumbles below the branch, and it strikes you, white hair or no, how young she looks. And you wonder how what? How young she looks. And you start to wonder how old was she when she died anyway? So, she says, wanna grab a branch or am I gonna have to come down to you? Um, uh, I just climb up, I guess. Okay, it's a good climbing tree. Parkour, parkour. Yep. You, you shimmy right up and find sort of a large branch. Uh, just, uh, well, do you want to pick the one slightly lower than her or slightly higher than her? Higher, of course. All right. You're sitting a little bit further up, maybe about like uh, 30 degrees around the tree, 20 degrees maybe, um, just sort of looking down at her. Um, and, once you, and as you're sort of situating yourself, she says, well, actually, and she says, Welcome, Kane. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been, it's been hectic. Right. How are you holding up? I mean, all right. It's been weird. Fair enough. She sort of sighs and looks out. Um, there's sort of a forest that extends one direction, like just a light forest that extends one direction. You see the cliff and the waves in front of you. And she says, you know, when I was younger, I used to spend hours alone in places like this. Well, not quite so nice as this, but the best I could find. Dad always told me not to wander off on my own, but I felt like I couldn't help myself. Home was dull, the town was dull, the other kids were dull. But places like this, I just never ran out of things to discover. I felt alive. Not too much alone time in, at uh, the city. Had pretty, pretty much the opposite experience. From what I can remember. Hmm. When I was younger, I think I would have said that I preferred that. But... Well, you did have it hard, didn't you? Nah, that's fine. Hmm. Very well. But... You know, Kane, I, I realized something in all those times when I was out. I realized that I didn't see the world the same as everyone else. My dad was probably afraid that some goblin or wild beast was going to maim me or kill me while I was wandering away from home. But he didn't know the half of what was out there. She looks up at you and says, Your father didn't give you everything that makes you special, Kane. And no, I'm not talking about your personality or love or anything like that, even if that's true, too. I've, I've got my own ability, and you've got it, too. And now, if you like, I'm going to show it to you. Sure. Uh, she gets sort of a mischievous grin, and she says, Close your eyes, Kane. Now, 
I want you to imagine that there are three curtains over your eyes. A red one. Three curtains? Curtains. Okay. Like over a window. I want you to imagine a red curtain, a blue curtain, and a green one. And when you open your eyes, imagine that you're lifting one of those curtains. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I have a picture I'm lifting the blue curtain. Okay. Um, as you do... I... Sorry, this is actually the most difficult one, so I need to look something up. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, it's... Ah, sorry. <laughs> I'm breaking the moment. There we go, all right. So, as you open your eyes, you take a broad view of the area where you are, and you notice all of the objects around you seem to have faded a little bit. Um, not like you can't see them. You can see them perfectly. Um, but it's not that they've gone like grayscale, but that they're duller by comparison to what you're now seeing, which is the magical currents that are running around this place. You see um, sort of a blue aura over the house around your mother. You see sort of a steely gray aura on the distant horizon. Um, and somehow you know, in fact, that what you are seeing um, is the, the magic that's holding this place together. What happens if I do the red curtain? Uh, do you want to try it? Yeah. All right, you, you close your eyes again, and you open them. And this time it's similar to before, but the one thing that you see this time is when you look at your mother, you notice swirling winds surrounding her, and she lights up like a beacon. So this seems to be some sort of magic, I mean, some sort of detection of um, sort of, well, at the very least, creatures like your mother. Um, you're not quite sure what else it might be. And then the green? Uh, you open that, and looking through the woods around you, um, you notice a poisonous snake that lights up. Um, you notice all of the spiders in all of the trees, um, including one tucked away behind a rock that sort of blares forth. Um, so you're seeing something sort of in the natural world, world more now. Well, that's in interesting. Um, and you can do this? It took me a while to realize what I was doing, but um, yes, it was, honestly, it played a large role in how I met your father. Um, I just That's slacked you this ability. Um, so, well, that's cool. Um, can you step in here? Can you step over here whenever you want? Only when your mind is open as it is while you're sleeping. I try not to be pushy, though. Can you see the other stuff going on in my mind? Not really. It's... I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Imagine... Imagine a very thick pane of glass where you can see sort of large shapes through it, but no detail. It's kind of like that. 
Okay. Um, I have more. One more thing for you, Kane. I notice you've been getting along decently with that trick I showed you last time. So. It was it was handy. It kind of hurt afterwards because there were two two guys, but it it worked out. Figured I'd show you one more gift from your father. I really wish he could be the one to show you this, but um. These are great. These are great visits. I gotta say, I'm I'm just loving these visits so far. They're pretty great. Well, and she smirks. I'm glad that you at least appreciate being called here when I'm ready to give you something. It's fine. I get it. Um, I mean, it's just we've been really busy, you know? And No, no, you're right. Yeah. And frankly, if it was me in your place, it would probably be exactly the same. You come by it honestly, Kane. Believe me. Um, anyways, though, uh, and she smiles a little bit. Want to see it? Sure. All right. Here we go. Uh, and she continues her little mischievous grin. Let me demo this one for you. And you watch as sort of the wind starts to coalesce around her. And then you see sort of a mirror image of her sort of slide down the branch away from her. Um, it's all made of wind and shadow. It's recognizable as her, but it wouldn't fool anybody thinking it was actually her. Um, but then your eyebrows raise as it jumps off the branch, runs some distance down the coast, jumps into the air, spins a few somersaults, and then hovers in midair, and then dives over the cliff. Uh, uh, um. Wait. So one, the copy went over the cliff. Correct. Yeah, she's okay. she's been on the branch the entire time, and you could see that. Easily. Okay. Well, that's an in interesting trick. All right, so here's what I want you to do this time, Kane. I want you to imagine drawing in the air around you like a sort of second skin. Imagine it enveloping you, forming around you. Now take that shell of wind shaped just like you and imagine a little piece of yourself inside of it. Hold that picture and then not with your real body, but with that wind, jump away. All right, so I guess I, I take like kind of take like a deep breath through my nose. Just, yep. Until it feels like I got enough wind, and then just kind of imagine like myself jumping forward. Okay. You do that. You feel the energy drawing around you, and then you see this shadowy cane leap away from your body. Um, and and plant neatly on the ground underneath the tree. Make him do a handstand. He does so. The robot. Yep. Uh, your, your, your mother looks down at it, it's like... And she just sort of goes, hmm. Um, here is the ability. Can I, can I try to pick something up with it? Um, yes, what do you try to pick up? It's like some rocks, I guess. Okay. Um, you run it down the coast where there's a pile of rocks. Um, you pick up a pebble easily enough. Um, sort of a... You pick a baseball-sized rock and picks that up as well. Um, then you try for a larger one and it sort of slips through. Um, and you sort of realize you can, you can handle light objects with these things, but nothing that heavy. This is really cool. <laughs> um, how does time just not move in here? Um, I asked. I'm asking that in character. Yeah. To be honest, I'm not sure. Except that if it moved too slowly, I think I'd get really bored waiting for you. Like, how long could I, would I know if it, like, got daytime or anything like that? 
outside. Yeah. Hmm. I imagine that if anything were to intrude too hard on your consciousness, it would rip you out of here. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I'll just hang out for a while until I get woken up from the bangle. I'd love that. That was out of character, but yeah, sure, that too. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying, okay, I thought you were saying that. I'm uh, not good I at bet. doing voices, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. Uh, I mean, I shit at it as well. All I do is pitch my voice a little different for each character. Um, okay, so yeah. Uh, so, you, um... I'm just going to copy pasta those. <laughs> yep. So, so you pass some time um, in that little space. Um, Aaron, you pass your watch, um, and finally, uh, Colleen wakes up, um, you head back to take the rest of your sleep, uh, Colleen, you yeah. got a couple hours to pass, give me perception as well. Perception. Okay. Um, nothing too eventful while you're keeping watch. Finally, you see the sun peek over the horizon and realize it's probably time to get moving. Should I wake everyone up? That would be the natural. Well, <laughs> let me see here. You know what? Let me do it this way. Everybody make constitution saving throws. Uh, those people who had exhaustion no longer have it. You slept it off. I'm waiting on Kane, I think. Oh yeah, uh, Colleen, you're already awake, so that's what this is for. All right, uh, so everybody sort of naturally rouses with the usual rhythm of being on the road, except for Fallon. Fallon is totally still sacked out. I use Mold Earth to move his pillow from under his head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fallon, <laughs> you awaken to a sudden jarring feeling as your head goes down a few inches. You probably wouldn't actually have a pillow, but maybe you have your head propped on something. You move that. Maybe you move like the rock that he's leaned up against or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh, you sort of dust yourself off. Um, oh, everybody deduct um, rations for that day of travel. Um, Alright, although you're about to restock, but I know some people had some extra, so... Just say, I took off two for one for Kane. Okay. Thank you, new buddy. Hey, Vaxus, do you like rope? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just going to walk forward. I'm not even going to take that one. Uh, that goes back to Kane's very first session. All right. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So, you all sort of gather yourselves up um, and start headed off towards your destination once again. Um, you sort of marked the course correction and, you know, uh, Fallon, Fallon, you have worked out that you're only about mm, maybe six miles away from the place at this point. So you should have no trouble finding it. Um, however, um, you're after a few miles of travel you hit a path um, that what seems like people might have used this path before um, you sort of and it's headed in the direction that you're going um, so you think that maybe this is some sort of supply route or something like that um, you're not quite sure uh, you follow it um, past uh, sort of Again, another one of those frozen rivers. Um, and as you're walking between 
two rock faces, you hear from your left and then from your right a shriek. Uh, not like somebody, you know, scared. More like um, a very large and scary animal kind of um, roar. I need everybody to give me nature. A wild Nick beard appeared. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you're all like, what was that? Wait, what that's good work. Never mind. What was that? What was that? Kane, you say, um, sounded kind of like those, uh, the wyverns. And then Fallon says, Dragons. And uh, can we leave? I need everybody to roll initiative. I'm not prepared for this, Casey. Mm. Oh, there we go. Back to the single-digit initiatives. Yeah, that's more like it. Can I alter that? Uh, no, I have to. What should your initiative be? Fifteen. Alright. I say not really that big of a deal, but oh well. Yep, no problem. Alright, so let me see here. Casey, can I have my zombie Goliath and just say that we use the spell slot every day? Yes, absolutely. Uh, which you, you would have. Um, I built this map. Um, at a different point. So let me find that real quick. Um, I will actually use this token. Oops. I accidentally put that on the map layer. There we go. Uh, where do you want it placed relative to you? Actually, you know what? Here's what I'll do. Um, if anyone wants to move up to two squares horizontally, so like up then right, or right to, or something like that, uh, feel free to arrange yourselves prior to this combat, um, since Fallon did recognize what was coming. I like so this. <laughs> so we can move two oh, squares. Right. Two squares in any direction? Uh, correct. But, but like, not diagonally. Just like, um, okay. you know, you can... Well, you can move up and then left, for instance, in order to move diagonally. Right. But... I'm just gonna actually just... Mm... I'll go this way. Actually. All right. Is everybody good? Yes. Sure. All right. I need uh, control over that token. So you do. Mm. Control is yours. Yeah. And Hooray! I'm, and I think I said before I'm allowing these to recover on long rest, so it should be at full. Um. Alrighty, so need to get my shit together, and Kane, it is your turn. Which can I see the one of them from where I am? Uh, yeah, you can. Oh wait, let me see. So that's a fifteen foot cliff face. So you would have heard them both. You know they're coming from two different directions. Um, this one you can see easily because that's only a five foot cliff. Uh, this one, you're a lot closer, and it's a lot taller, so you you kind of know that it's there, but um, eh, it effectively has probably half cover, um, unless you step back a bit. Um, All right, and I'm gonna the answer to that down is the... actually yes. Alright, cool. Uh, hold on, is that an action or a bonus action to do that? 
that ability. I think it's a reaction. Oh, 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 wait. To no, do... just to, to, to make him. Uh, it's an action. Okay. I'm going to move down to the left. All right. Can I still see him from there? Uh, yeah, you can see both of them fairly clearly. Okay. Uh, what is that exactly? Like, is that just like a large rock? Um, yeah, it's sort of like a, it's a rock that's like covered in snow. All right. Well, actually, I'm going to fire an arrow before I start running, and then I'm going to run and hide, like dive behind that to hide. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're firing at this bottom one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Um, so go ahead and roll your attack. I need to finish finding there isn't a step up. Well. And I have advantage because I'm going first. Yes, you do. Um, how, oh man, that's however, a bad roll. Yeah, it's a pretty bad roll. What um, are those rolls? And unfortunately, your arrow is sort of plinks off of its natural armor. A three and a six. I still go hide, though. Okay. Uh, like, give hood, me... hood up and hide. Yep, give me stealth for hiding. Okay, yep. Seems decent. Uh, Colleen. Um, so we can see both of them? Yes. Um, although, like I said, this one is up a 15-foot uh, little cliff face there, so that might mess with the angles. And the other one is just... Uh, um, it's up five, or it's in the air? Or... Yeah, this embankment is probably more easily climbable. Um, they're both on the ground right now. Interesting. Um... I'm going to have my zombie attempt to scramble up this hill. All right, let me see here. Uh, yeah, that that one is sloped enough that... Um, let me see here. I'll just dock five feet of movement for getting up the hill. Okay, so it can move, like, there. Yeah, I mean, in fact, it could... Oh, wait, what's its speed? I think it's only 20 feet. Where are you at, zombie? Pretty sure zombie speed is just 20 feet. Yep. Yeah. So you could get to like one of these squares. Oh, zombie. <laughs> you try. Alright. Um. I'm going to attempt to move over here. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I can get further than that. You can probably go another five feet. Yeah. All right, let me just take on these dragons, man. All right. Uh, I'm going to open with a hot mirror image. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is that? You run up to it, and then you mirror image. <laughs> All planned. He protect. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else? That's 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 all I got. All right. Cool. Fallon, it is your turn. Um. Since we're already fighting. Are you going after which one? The one that Clean's going after. Okay. All right. Yep. And you level your crossbow, and you do indeed hit it. I would have had advantage since it hasn't done anything yet, but it doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. I rolled the same thing. Alright. Um, ten piercing, huh? Yep, alright. Um, so your arrow flumps into its hide. Um, doesn't seem too perturbed by it at this point, but it's you've got its attention. And... I'll go ahead and, um, oh, hold on, is this a bonus action, right? I'll cast Hunter's Mark on it. Oh, alright. Afterwards. <laughs> no problem. Alright, it is Hunter's Marked. 
Cool. I pass. Okay. Maxis. Okay, so is this a cliff face or is it like a hill? So this one is more of a cliff face. You'll have to actually like climb that in Go order to try to get up. This one's more of just an embankment. I'm calling it, uh, you know, if you scramble like straight up the big part, you're going to lose five feet of movement getting over it. All right. Just because it's difficult. So... Could I get to like here? Could I see if I get to there? Yeah, probably. All right. I guess... Or do I need to go to here? I mean, you have 40 feet, right? You could get to where I'm pointing. Yeah, okay. Um, and I guess I will throw a javelin at this man, but I'm going to rage first, actually. All right. Yep, you go into your rage. Um, the, the storm aura comes around you. And... Uh, your first attack will go wide. A 21 doesn't hit him? You have advantage? Yeah. Why? The necklace you just gave me. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I forgot about this. Um, <laughs> alright, alright. Um, let me... Let me just... Okay, alright. So, yeah, um, so you come around, you, you pull out your javelin, and before you even get to the bottom of the hill, um, you know exactly um, where it's going to be. Um, and you throw your javelin at it, uh, sticks into it, go ahead and give me uh, damage. Okay, hopefully this has my rage in it already. All right. I it... Um, no. Uh, but no, it rage only so works on a... melee. So. Okay, that's fine. All right, so six damage there. Um, and here's how I'm gonna do it for like whether something happens to this javelin while it's stuck into the dragon. Just roll a d10 for me. So these like actual okay. dragons or like. Seven. Or, like... I'm going to allow that you can recover this after the combat. Okay. On that. All right. Um, I think you get a second attack. Uh, I do. I have Uno Moss Javelin. Man, okay, 13. that one does go wide. Um, and that one's not stuck in a dragon, so uh, sure, I'll allow that you recover that one. Okay. Um, okay. So do can? Well, no, I don't have anything else. All right, we're good. All right. That brings us to this guy. So, let me see what he can do. Um, I have to double check my rules on how areas of effect work. Ha <laughs> ha! That's from over here. Ah, that's how it works. Alright. So... Okay, so that needs to be the origin right there. Okay. So... It's gonna come up to here. And is going to unleash a blast of cold, um, hitting uh, Colleen, Aaron, and Zombie. So I need the three of you to make constitution saving throws. Zombie's doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, well, here comes the damage. So, 
Uh, 29 <laughs> damage to zombie. Wait, is it at 1? It's at 1. <laughs> <laughs> if it goes to 0, I think it has an ability that kicks in. Um, Hang in there, zombie. You got this. <laughs> oh, that's I amazing. I don't think it has a 0 ability. Uh, when a zombie would get reduced to zero, it has, uh, undead fortitude. I, I well, right, yeah. Um, all right, and then, uh, Aranen and Kaleen, you take half that, so 14 cold damage, um, as a, a blast of wintry chill, um, comes out of the dragon's mouth. All right. That was weird. Tits. Uh, all right, um. Heard a low damage there. That'll be its turn. Yeah, it was a pretty low damage roll. Um, Gamork. I see. I see. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I assume he can get to here. It was like 26 something. Alright. Nope, oh, wrong character sheet, sorry. All right, uh, yep, that's a hit. All right, so 10 damage of the piercing variety, and... Oh, snap! Okay, Gamork bounds up the hill. Uh, this dragon has sort of just gotten done um, unleashing its cold. Um, Gamork bounds up grabs him sort of around the shoulders and just the dragon was not ready for this uh, wrestles him to the ground so now prone. I like oh yeah I like to think he like got him by the scruff of the neck and used his body weight to drag him down yeah all right cool anything else for Gmork? uh he looks around to see how impressed everyone is <laughs> I'm, I give him a thumbs up, but I'm hiding so no one sees it. <laughs> Zombie feels nothing for your efforts. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. He feels like real cold. Can, can Gamork <laughs> react and bite cold. the zombie? Um, okay, Gamork's done. Alright, cool. Thing. Yeah. Remember mm. these guys? I do. I, I thought that they were going to come into play because I saw those stupid ice things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was going to, I almost asked it out loud, but people were talking, so I let it ride. Right, Wait, right. what is this? What's happening here? Actually, you know what? I'll just do it like Remember those little pillars of ice that turned into those, like... I don't think he was there. Ice... I think I was controlling him. Probably. Uh... Well, they're these... they turn into these little ice creatures. They're like... I remember whenever Gork would bite them, it would be like, you know, crunching ice or something. Speaking of which, this one saw you hide, Kane. You were in plain view to it. You're hidden from everybody what? else, but not from it. Fuck um, that guy. And uh, he is going to, um, yeah, he's going to go after you with his claws. Twenty. Since I fire with my bow, I don't have a rapier in my hand, do I? Nope. Shit, son. Uh, uncanny dodge. Okay, this will be halved. You take two slashing damage. And you take one cold damage. As it rakes across your um, your, your leg and feels kind of unpleasant. Fuck you, Iceman. Alright. Um, this one is going to swing, fly down here and accost Maxis. I He's imagine an eight misses. Yeah. Right. Oh, you roll well against the low health guy, but not the high health guy. See what it is. So let me see this guy. Yeah, I let you guys get away with that crap all the time. 
<laughs> Come on. Come on. He tra traveled diagonal. He, he came down and then up the whatever. They have or a fly speed. Down the train. Okay. He just okay. said, eh, it's fine. <laughs> I don't want to hit Fallon. No, no. I don't really want to hit Fallon. If, if it it's, it's slow to go up a hill, but it's faster to go down a hill. Duh. If it couldn't fly, I wouldn't have given it that. Alright. It's going to attack. Mm, is it gonna do that? Yeah, it's gonna attack you, Fallon. I imagine about a so. Misses. Alright. Um, and Let me make sure I'm not lying. This last one. Yeah, that definitely misses. It will fly to here and take a dodge action. Alright, um, Aaron. Uh, what's the weather like? Good question. I know what the weather's like as soon as I find it on my sheet. Oh yeah, actually. Oh, I forgot about that. That should really come into play. Um, yes, it should. So, there is no snow, oh, could you? but there is some very strong wind, which actually future um, ranged weapon attacks are going to take a minus two penalty because of that. So my question is, does it qualify as stormy conditions? For sake of a lightning spell... I'm going to call this a coin flip. Uh, odds or evens? Uh, odds. Balls. Alright. It's super windy, but it is not stormy. I nice. might have given you some bullshit about, like, <laughs> static charge in the air or something like that. That's what I was debating. I just left no, it a chance. Not that. Okay. Hmm. Come help me. Help me. Give me that sweet, sweet sneak attack. Uh... Da, 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 da. Everything's too spread for effective AoE hilarity. Um. So many options. Okay. I'm... I'm just gonna cast eggs. That's probably the nice guy thing to do. All right. So plus five HP, and I will give that to the non-sneaky rogue. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it to the three people being attacked by the weird flying dudes. Whatever they're called. Okay. Congratulations, you all get plus five HP. Sick. It's like there, there, there. Now, yeah. um, again, that is a raise to your HP maximum. Do not actually change your HP maximum. Just write plus five next to it. Um, and then increase your current HP by five. Very, very important that we don't get screwed up on what your actual max HP is. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, wait, actually, no, I can't. I can't. For I mean, I wouldn't want to inadvertently oh, increase I cannot actually hit maxes with that. There's okay. range. Uh, so maxes do probably. not do that. Who are we hitting instead? I'll give it to uh, the actual real one, not the clown of clean. Instead. You know. All right, clean. I... You also have uh, plus five HP. Again, just like right plus five next to your maximum. Please stand. Well. Please stand. And, and, well. and raise your current HP by five as well. Yeah. Do you see my my whisper, Casey? Yes. This, I I realized a flaw in that plan. Okay. Because I pay. gave one away. Lols. Um. Nick attack. All right. Uh, anything <laughs> else, Aaron? Um. I will. Hold on. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna move up here just at a little bit better vantage point of things. Okay. You can do that. Alright. 
All done? Ah, uh, Ted, yeah. All right, cool. All right, now this guy. What can he actually do? He can go kill himself. Promising. Or there is a thing that just. All right, actually, these guys are not natural tacticians. Let me see this. They're beasts. Yeah. All right. So the final dragon is going to come and thud down next to Maxis, and. We'll start attacking. So first, it'll come after you oh, with shit. its bite, uh, and I think it has disadvantage, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, you you easily anticipate its bite and step out of the way um, as it goes through. It gives you sort of a confused look, um, then swipes at you with a claw. Um, misses once again um, as you duck under it. Then comes at you with the other claw. Um, which, once again, this time... It has it lined up. You see the claw raking across you. And then you just say, no. You slide down onto one hand and scooch back against the wall as the claw swipes through the space where you just were. And a very confused-looking dragon um, bellows in front of you. And that is where we're going to end for tonight, because actually finishing this combat will take kind of a while. No! Alright. Thanks for watching, everybody at home. I like the uh, knocked, knocked down symbol for the dragon. <laughs> Suffering from back pain. <laughs> Lift with your knees, dragon. Your knees. Lift with your knees. And you two out there, lift with your knees as well. Good night and good luck. <laughs>